Okay. Boom. So, guys. Oh, man. This is a good one. Listen, welcome back. Oh, my gosh. This dog is peeing on my floor. This asshole. Oh. This, look. I, welcome. Oh, and it's going on and on and on. And you know what? He walked to the door. This asshole ego. Shout out to everybody who follows Fit Bully Kennels. T -fit, listen, I don't even know what to do right now. We're here with the Unmotivated Podcast. We got Ruben and Ego still peeing. He is still peeing on my floor, and he's looking at me. He didn't. This is going to leave a mark. <laughs> is it? Is that the name of the podcast? The Unmotivated Podcast. Yeah. So get this, oh, Ruben. It's it's okay. unmotivated with a middle finger upside down. Ah, oh, damn! Okay, he okay. is still peeing. What did you eat, oh. man? You look. This is ridiculous. Tonight's topic, and uh, Jesus, his dog is still peeing. I kid you not. He's still effing peeing, and he's just looking at me, bro. It's my fault, though, so I got to clean this up. This is a pound of pee. At least he didn't piss in my bed. Oh, holy cow. Okay. So, okay. Um, Ruben, okay, yes. we he brought up a topic, and I think it's an important topic, especially to those new, those new breeders who struggle trying to get started, and, you know, it's kind of like a patent troll. Once you get going... Uh, or if you do something great or they say, hey, you can buy in at this and we'll get you to do that. You actually end up getting screwed. So I'm going to let Ruben take the floor, tell you a little bit, to him tell you a little bit about himself and then um, objectively walk you through why this topic's important <laughs> and what you could do to not be uh, bamboozled, hoodwinked, hoin swoggled when trying to get into this dog space and, and you know, start off correctly. Yes, you know, another one you forgot to throw into the mix is getting Shanghai. Um <laughs> <but> <laughs> You know, um, in, 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 in all regards, you know, my name is Ruben, Ruben Paredes. I think you guys have probably seen me uh, either on uh, Instagram as uh, San Miguel Bulls, also RP Images Fremont, uh, retired RVT that stands for Registered Veterinary Technician. Um, I can't really think of anything. The only thing I think probably worked at was at a Home Depot while I was going to school <laughs> because, uh, you know, when you're doing your clinical rotations, you're not allowed to get paid, you know, and I had to make a little money somehow, right? Wow. Uh, at least for my gas, you know, but uh, you're not allowed because it causes conflicts. Of interest, yada yada yada. I mean, you know, it, it's 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 a stupid rule, but hey, you know what? We made it. We're here. Uh, you know, I take took my state boards, even though I was already working in clinical settings. I took my state boards back in, uh, I believe, ninety seven, ninety eight. Um, that's when I officially became registered. Uh, um, other than that, you know, I, I've worked in um, several settings. I've also I had the privilege and the honor of teaching at WCC uh, for people that are up and coming to get in their, um, their licenses to become, you know, RBTs, registered uh, veterinary technicians. Um, so from there, obviously, I've also did some stints that with uh, research and development, both for Roche Pharmaceuticals and Stanford University under Dr. Miriam Curet. Uh, I got to work extensively uh, with Dr. Janice King at um, Bishop Branch Veterinary Center. And that's probably where I, um, I had a lot of theory in, uh, in terms of reproduction, but this is what really sealed the deal, you know, and really got to see up close and personal and not only, you know, have the theory, but also applied theory, you know, because one thing he can read all the books in the world and it'll tell you this, do this, do this, do that. But, um, you're, you're going to have to improvise, man. A lot of times when you're doing sting stuff, you know, you're going to have to improvise or you're going to have to cut. And I mean, I don't mean cut corners in a bad way, but there's going to be times where you're just going to have to do things not by the book. And if you do want to do things, everything exactly by the book, you're going to drive yourself crazy. And it's, that's, uh, that's why that's why businesses and jobs will require experience, too, because, you know, there are more things you learn post education than you do actually in school, believe it or not, people. So so Ruben here, he's got let's say him and a guy know the same thing. One's 30, one's 50. The 50 year old, <laughs> he knows more because he's seen more. So they've he read the same it. books. They've got the same scores. But the experience is astronomically different. And um, that's and it. <laughs> you know, and, and you know, it, it, the saying goes right: you repetition is the mother of all skills, decision the father of all actions. Uh, you know, you, it's not that I'm better than you or I know more than you. It's just that it's just repetitive over and over and over. It gets to the <laughs> point, you know, where you know, there's, for example, you know, there's a, a vein that runs down their forearms called a cephalic vein, and um, you know, there's several ways of drawing blood from an animal. And I'm just, I know, I'm going a little bit off tangent, but I just want to reiterate that what you just said about the experience. Yeah. Where you it is someone that's freshly graduated out of UC Davis. And usually most of the time when doctors were uh, like, here's a, a great example, Dr. Nicholas Bricot, uh, shout out if he's watching or listening. <laughs> One of these days, right? You know, he, he, he was cool, man. He was a really cool doctor, you know, but when he just recently had graduated from um, UC Davis, you know, he took on a case where we know he had to do a um, um, amputation of a, a rear leg. And, you know, 
I mean, I don't want to disrespect him, but you can tell that he had never done one or, you know, was just lacking the, so what I did is I picked up the anatomy book and I'm showing him the, as he's actually making the, 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 um, the incisions, you know, cause you got to cut the bone <laughs> and sure enough, man, lo and behold, he hits the femoral artery. Oh shit. And right away, you know, I grasped him some, you know, and not, I wasn't even, you know, just instinctively, I grasped the, um, the, you know, the, the, um, the mosquito forceps. And he looks at me, uh, what's this? I said, uh, you hit a femoral artery. You might want to clamp that off. And, you know, you can see that he was kind of like distraught, but I was kind of like cool and collected, but I'll experience. tell you what experience exactly. as, a, as a motherfucker, if it was the other way around, you know, where he was doing, and I would have been like, holy sh I mean, there's, <laughs> Hey, are we making a horror movie here? I would have been, but luckily, I, I mean, I, I, there's just so many things that, you know, that you kind of, I'm not going to say desensitized, but even like when you see emergency responders, yeah, you know, the, the, you know, the ones that have been through the trial and fire, you notice that they have this calming energy. I remember I got hit by a truck in 1996 and oh, I remember oh, the EMT was just so like, you know, and, and it, I I knew something was good, but I was on this adrenaline dump, you know, so I'm like trying to get up, compound fracture, keep landing on my face. And she finally calmed me down. And it was like, you know, I know I was entering in, going into shock, but she, you know, she put the warm blankets on me and I was like, you know, like, so, and I was thinking to myself, you know what, if I go out, at least I'll go out peacefully, you know, I'm going to bleed <laughs> out peacefully, you know, but anyway, we're going on a tangent there. Um, as Trevor reiterated earlier today, you know, we are uh, definitely going to look into the possibilities. No, well, not the possibility, because it happens left and right. It happens more yeah. often than you guys realize. And, and, and Ruben has what you call, if there was a, a, a sports show for first take on people getting fucked over by breeders, him and me both. We get, I mean, you oh. get the stories that I think some of the funniest one. No, no, this again, it's two extremes in my case, but shout out to the person in prison who messaged me and said that he's starting his kennel while in prison and he's got a dog poop and blood. I said, I'm in my head. I go, I think my man, wow. you know, this, this, you, your part, you might want to focus on some other things other than trying to get a dog off the ground Absolutely. if you're locked up. But point is, is we, we get an experience probably some of the craziest fucking shit on earth and i just thinking where does this happen i probably got five messages and all truth just on my tiktok alone of people saying they bought dogs from crackheads and i said one night Ooh. i said i said hey maybe crackheads are the way to go i'm I, this is getting worse and worse ah, so ah. so i'm 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 baffled and, and mind you that goes back to the bamboozling but Ruben, you know, one of his favorite sayings or his famous sayings to me, because we talk quite a bit, is there's a sucker born every second and some people want to be had. Yeah. They want exactly. Thank you very much. And it's like they it's almost like you're you're like in this trance. And the way the reason I say this, Trevor, is that it's happened to me, yeah. not with dogs, but with cameras. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ruben will sell himself on some camera. And I tell him, don't do it. Don't you know, leave that camera alone, man. It's not good. He's like, oh, I just got to just see for myself. Let me let me spend six thousand dollars to see if it's a good camera. And, and, yeah, exactly. And you know, you know, that's what these, you know, especially we're not, not even get into lenses, but you know, when when the person like obviously when someone buys, a, you know, ah, I don't want to say that, but it's it's true. When we buy, we're we're on on emotional rage. You know, like you'll notice when people. I personally have tried to imply in my life that I try not to make, especially a huge, huge investment, or if I'm making a big purchase, I try to sleep on it. But then again, you know, you can miss on a good opportunity if you don't sleep on it. So that's when you got to, you know, you got to have your circle nice and, 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 you know, tight. And, and, and so someone that's not as um, uh, subjectively involved can give you more of an objective assessment. Say, man, you know what, you're screwing up or you can get a better deal or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But you know what, we're, we're, we're like I said, we're going on a tangent here and you know, <laughs> we're, it's going to be a really, you know, if, if we really like started going to look for every little single detail to look for, um, I mean, we will be here till you know next year, twenty twenty five. We're back. But well, let's let, let's draw perspective. Let's. I'm, yeah. What I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll target some things, and you kind of get perspective, mm -hmm. and we'll keep this thing, you know, kind of directive. We like to, you know, stay on here for about forty five minutes to an hour okay. at tops, right. and that way, because mind you, I told you I want I want a hundred of them with you alone. And the beauty about even the stuff <laughs> you've discussed is you go, oh, there's more opportunity. 
Um, now, Ruben, a uh, couple couple things to take into to consideration, people. I met Ruben literally a couple years ago now, and uh, you know I'm a full lightning bolt. So you meet me, and it's like I'm my foot's on the gas, going 200 if it can. And you know he's super capable of so many. So I said, man, this dude, I think very important to the world. That was my that was my take when I when I we spoke, and I said, bro, the world got to know this guy exists. And um, I'm one of those people who've lived behind so many you know, good stories and good people, but, you know, myself getting out of my own way is a big thing. So when we're, when we're like looking on the, the outside or inside out and both sides, you say, we get messages from people, I think, who have good intent at times. And then you turn around and something simple like this, Ruben, and we'll, we'll start with this. There's this famous thing called paperwork and oh. paperwork justifies in some sense, the value of what you can sell your dog for without paperwork. You've basically got a stolen car. So what happens is people in the American bully space is, hey, man, somebody gave me this dog. Is there a way to get my paperwork? You can get it from the person who should have been breeding correctly and then potentially price your dog or be so great at marketing. They don't give a shit because they have to have it from you. And guess what? We've sold. I had 11 dogs in our last two litters that we did. And there was 11 dogs at the house total out of 11 dogs. I believe only two people bought paperwork and everybody paid, which is cheap for American bully. Three thousand dollars for no paperwork. Think about that. Oh, wow. Wow. Every, yeah, every 11 people paid three bands a dog or, or nine, my bad. Nine paid $3,000 for no paperwork just because they like, I don't give a shit. I just need a dog from you because you know the, what? The For, marketing think, stuff and the good business. But I do have the paperwork. It's yeah. all right there. <laughs> you're, you're, I think, I think you and very few people like you because, well, there isn't really no one like you, but, uh, you know, there's in their own respect, you know, I can call them by name. Uh, actually, we're not doing anything wrong, right? We, we can yeah. call them. You know, but some, someone like uh, Marco Suarez, yeah. Ron Ramos, uh, Fabian Chichester, uh, Sam Lean, um, even Dr. Serving, you know, uh, you know, uh, David Cardenas, they all have um, the I'm going to say, OK, let's just I'm not even going to go into that because my mind just went whoop. But um, let, let, let's all group them up. Let's say they're all breeding American bullies. You've got American bullies. Yeah. You've got American bullies. You know, and that's something that I really wanted to touch up on. If if, if the person you know, I was going to start from a whole other realm. I actually wrote down a couple of, you know, like, God, I think I went up to seven steps that I say, if I keep writing this down, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to finish, you know, but like, you know, let, let's just, the hypothetical paperwork is, is, is great. You know, it's, it's a great uh, source to start with, but like, let's just say, you know, I'm just like, you know, with, with all due respect with the word in this context, I'm a virgin to buying puppies. And yeah, I want, that's most people. Impulsive. I don't know, Trevor. I don't know. I just, you know, happen to see. I asked someone on the street, hey man, what kind of breed is that? Oh, it's an American bully or a French bull or et cetera, whatever the breed may be, you know? And sure enough, I jump on my and I start clicking away. The first thing you want to be careful, guys, is um images. You know, this little thing here, it's a liar. It's a it, the cameras are the best liars in the world because I'll tell you what, I can take a picture from up here. And, and I can take a picture from down here, okay? When I took a picture from the top, I'm gonna make things look a little bit smaller, a little bit more compromised. When I take a picture from down here, it's called a Superman pose. You guys will notice this, especially with like, you know, guys that are in sports, modeling, whatever. They take the lower of the Superman pose and they make this person look, you know, same with dogs, guys. If I want to look, make a dog, if it's got a long back and it's got messed up being stuff, I'm gonna send that person. And now let's pretend that I'm the one that's scamming, right? I'm gonna send <laughs> all these pictures from the top you know and it's oh wow it's, it's got a decent little back oh wow those feet look tight yeah because the dog is inclined towards the front and the knuckles are hiding you know the knuckles are hiding i can't see like that well what about the eyes what about the nose what about the teeth what about the ear set what about the invert and i'm now referring strictly to the french bulldog right where's the invert on the 45 degrees on the nose what about the dewlap i mean there's so many freaking variables so right then and there start off with images and if you can i know it sounds a little bit corny probably a little bit outdated is try to get a recent picture of a recent newspaper like you know the herald the tribune the wall street journal whatever something that you can now obviously we've got photoshop and there's a lot of ways to manipulate things <laughs> there's a really neat trick on photoshop you guys probably know this uh tool it's it's called the liquify oh, yeah. and and bloat things and we can shrink them and we can really 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 so that first and foremost is um something that you want to be uh 
uh, extremely careful with, you know, don't buy a dog on a whim because wow, that picture is badass. You know, <laughs> that's the word, you know, be, be extremely cautious with that. The, yeah. the second thing you want to be careful with when, when buying a dog is the phone numbers. You know, if you get an area code, that's 0115266855. Call 3212277. Remember that commercial? <laughs> oh, I'm going to go with a call 1-800-SAY-CARS-FOR-KIDS. Um, <laughs> you you got to be, uh, you know, extremely careful because more than likely uh, it's a uh, image. It's been altered, you know, telephone numbers. And then, um, the third thing is is when somebody is extremely extremely aggressive um to get your money you know if they ask you to send money to another state or ruben just tell them look nobody's fucking selling gold nobody's no. they're fucking you know and the sad part is is people have messaged me literally all over the world because the way the american bully alone is presented even the fucking frenchie now is like you're missing out on something and i assure you you're not missing out on picking up shit every day Hey, absolutely not. And you know what? If they make it sound, you know, if it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck and walks like a duck, more than likely, you're not just looking at a duck, you're looking at Daffy Duck. You know, so, you know, you got to really. Some fucking you know, goof. You know, exactly. You know, you got to get your common sense. But that's the thing. When somebody's trying to sell you something, for the most part, if you're the receptive and you're in a receptive buyer, you're in an emotional state. You're emo and what happens when you are, you're in, a, in an emotional state is rationale goes out the back. Yeah, you're not thinking rationally anymore. Like you know, like okay, I want this car. It's another five thousand for the leather, but leather's gonna last. The leather's not gonna crack. I can see myself without a shirt and wrapping myself up against that leather. It's the same thing, guys. The other thing is like if you are, if you do have the option to use a credit card, use your credit card. Believe it or not, there's been a couple of cases where you know, and of course, the majority of these sellers, they're gonna want cash, cold hard cash. Of course. Uh, Exactly. You know, and we, we know why, you know, it, it's uh, very easy to, uh, it's liquid, you know, we can, you know, cash is key. So if, if there's a, a, a potential seller and you want to be able to apply some of the laws that might be apt, but then again, you might not be able to apply to these laws because some of these people that are so-called breeders, they're not really breeders, you know, they're just uh, reproducers. You know, say. people, that'll be another good episode that we do. You know, don't go down the rabbit hole tonight, but what makes a good breeder? Like how to even Ooh. identify. That one probably one that borderline should come before getting hustled, but there's uh, going to be more people looking for pets than people trying to do the right thing about, you know, when it comes to the dog. So we got to stay on topic, but that's, that right there is a whole fucking segment. Oh, right? that one down. Exactly. You know, and so, you know, after, you know, we, we, you know, we ask for images, we've got phone numbers, we send, we don't want to send money to another state and we don't want, you know, sending money, not in the United States, want to use our credit cards. The sixth and seventh thing that I want to get to is I want to see the animal in person. I want to see the animal. I mean, you're spending, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight thousand $8,000, whatever the amount may be. I think a ticket, Ticket within the United States of America for five hundred dollars, a round trip ticket for five hundred bucks is not a lot. Once you no. see the animal in person, well, even actually before getting to get to the part where you see the animal in person, you know, obviously check out references, ask for references. And guys, this, I mean, I I wish maybe to me it's easy. I think I can teach anyone how to use something as simple as this. As oh, this, that's a scope. Exactly, guys. This this little device here, you can get these at Walgreens for ten dollars. Trevor, they've got stethoscopes for ten bucks. And what, what would someone who's uneducated or uninformed, what would they use that for? First thing, buddy. All right. Oh man. Right eye, left side, right side. Boom. Okay. Right. Okay. Come here, wait. <laughs> Guys, look, I, I what I love about Ruben, for those who can't, I would tell you to go watch the video version of this as well. He's put in perspective how to even use things that can literally protect and keep your dog healthy, happy, and and make sure you make a good, a decent purchase, right? Because none of us really know until we know. And by the time you find out, you're $5,000 in. Exactly. This happens more often than you would think, Trevor. Look, this is the scapula of the dog. Mm hmm you're going to you're going to feel right here here's this first intercostal rib second intercostal rib third so between the third and fourth rib we should have his heart okay all you're going to do you're going to grab your handy dandy stethoscope you're going to put your finger on the back of this auditory bell right here 
and you're going to run it right here. Boom. Okay, there it is. And you know what I'm listening? I'm listening to Native American drums. <laughs> it sounds like this. It's a lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. You know, we want the right, uh, you know, ventricle to close right with the left ventricle. We don't want that mitral valve to stay open because if you've got a mitral valve that remains open, now we've got cardiac insufficiency. And instead of listening to that, that drumming, we're going to listen to an old wrecked washing machine. It's going to sound like love, whoosh, love, whoosh, love whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. you know, unfortunately, that situation right there, $10 stethoscope, you listen to the heart. Now, I'm not going to say like, you know, there's different grades. There's a grade one, two, three, four, and five. The moment you hear something even remotely as a whoosh, whoosh, you need to be very cautious with that potential purchase yeah. because yeah. guys, this, this is a, a genetic defect. Um, uh, and, and, you know, this dog could live to be five, six, seven. I mean, it could live, uh, you know, a, an entire life, but more often, depending on the grade of the cardiac insufficiency of, of what's called a heart murmur, that dog will be breeding let's say at about two, three years old. I mean, I'm not going to, I don't, you know, rest in peace. I have a lot of respect for Ed Shepard, but a lot of people know that unfortunately uh, there's a big rumor that, you know, one of the greatest of all time, Dax uh, um, had cardiac insufficiency and passed away literally as he was breeding, you know, and I, I don't have any skin in the game. I don't own any Dax. I don't want to put that out there, you know, but just something to kind of get your radar. There's some free game for you guys. If you guys are messing with those lines, you know, just, you know, just be aware of that. You know, yeah, like no, said, I'll tell you, look, let me be very candid in saying that there was a woman who leaned into Rocco blood and, and Dax blood. And, you know, wow. we got a mirror from her and she had to restart. And she's one of the people who loses money on every, every dog because of what she experienced in her own um, breeding program. And with that, let me be very clear in saying this. She takes the dogs to go get their assessment done by a doctor. And then she goes to a cardiologist for all the puppies just to oh, get wow. a second look because heart murmurs and heart problems plagued her for such a long time. And um, I could tell you, she does it out of the kindness of her heart. She really loves the American bully. She loves confirmation and, and she loves a healthy dog and having that experience, what she told me, I'm not going to say her name when we bought a dog from her was it freaked her out. It freaked, and so she, she's like, matter of fact, she's like, yo, everybody send me CDR four. It's not an American book. She, she went down a genetic rabbit hole trying to make sure that this dog gets the best chance it can. Uh, but as you know, human design well, for me, when they always say, hey, well, I want, uh, you know, more of a, uh, more bone, more this look, the big, these people get, if you're not paying attention to social media is doing a good job on one end of highlighting bodybuilders, these young guys are, they're chapping out because you run out of two things in life. One's energy and one's time, whichever one comes first, one of them's coming. And when hey. your body internally is overworking, it's like, you know, shorter neck. Less range of motion in terms of mo uh, mobility. Less mobility means twice the amount of energy got to be put out to get from point A to point B. Uh, Frenchie's a prime example. They have the worst energy output out of all dogs. They point do. blank. Yeah, and, and it's documented. Yeah, it's doc exactly. It's not like you're making, yeah, no, no, I'm 100% with you. That's why I tell people, you, you sure you want Frenchie. <laughs> I, I breed Frenchies very sparingly. I, I breed Frenchies and I tell people, like, tell me why. You know, like, well, what, like, cause I mean, you got to know what you're getting into. And I, I am an open book. You know, I, I honestly, yeah, sometimes yeah. I even like discourage people and I, I try to breed to the best of my ability. Uh, but you know, they're Frenchies guys. <laughs> <laughs> you got to mention is like, as you're right, you know, in that same region, all you got to do is just go a little bit, you know, and it's a little bit hard, especially with brachycephalic dogs. You know, when, when you're, you're listening, you'll listen to their breathing. They go, <sighs> So you kind of have to zone that out. Uh, there are some much more advanced stethoscopes. They're called Littman, and they actually have an internal recorder where they'll actually record, and they'll 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 give you a little process to see if there's any type of abnormalities. And then from there, you can take that recording to a cardiologist. It's going to charge you, you know, I'm just hypothetical here, 70, 80 bucks. Okay, listen to this. But where I'm getting at is that 70, 80 bucks versus five, six, seven, four, three, whatever the amount may be, can save you a lot. That's one thing that I really, really want you guys to pay attention. 
you know, you got to look at the dog, you know, put your hands on the dog. Okay. Unless you have someone that has a lot of experience, you really trust. And you say, Hey man, Trevor, I'm <clears> going <throat> to, I'm not, I can't make it to Texas for X reason, but I need you to go check out this dog, you know? Yeah, and, and guys, the honesty amongst breeders is not a, not a real thing, but you know, I'll tell you this. We sold a dog to a woman and her family who was cryptorchid and she didn't want to pay a lot of money. I said, well, look, so let me walk you through what's going on. I gave her the dog's health results. I said, so, and then she's recently messaged me and said, Hey, what, what do I have to do? What do I have to go about to, um, you know, to, to maybe make some more pretty babies of smoking. I said, I said, mom, uh, listen, from a, a business standpoint, you could buy his paperwork. I have it. You do as you please, but I would never double down on a cryptorchid dog. So I wouldn't breed enough. If you want to get another dog, I'm happy to work with you. And, and cause you know, you're doing right by the dog and I'd rather be in a good family. And she says, she said the, the next message, I'll take your advice. I appreciate the honesty as always. My job on this side, as we had to remove Bam Bam, is to ensure that people are getting a good representation of what I believe in. Now, the challenge is, I believe in money. I'm a for-profit motherfucking person. I think there's a right way to go about it. I I am not a, a not-for-profit organization, so we're clear people. But 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 it, there's there's a way to do it so that people who are bringing a life force in their home um, don't get like abused and robbed and feel beat down because I've, I had a buddy who bought it like a, we'll just call it a teacup a teacup Frenchie Joker was small as shit and <laughs> and the breeder didn't tell him shit. And let alone how many issues that Joker from the day he got it to the next three days spent five thousand dollars trying to keep that dog alive, and he didn't know what he was getting. So you know when Ruben saying these things, they're breeding more design, aka more problems, reducing the quality of life, which is going to long term. We're talking about investment. It's, Cost you an arm and eight legs and a house note or two trying to keep this dog alive. And you know what's crazy? You spend a lot of money up front. And where do most people spend the majority of the rest of the, the money on the dog? And the end of life, you go, oh, let me just spend another 5000 to keep him alive for another month. So now you $50,000 in on the dog that was going to die anyway, but you had problems at two years old. So eight years old, you just got to let it go. And you know what? And and that's, you know, there, there's a brand of car. You're probably familiar with this brand of car. Uh, it's called the Fiat. You've heard yeah. those cars? Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah. I used to I used to drive Fiats. Oh, well, you know what, man? There was a while there back in the 70s where they had these little cool convertibles and you know, and it was just an eye catcher. Look like a it wasn't a Porsche, you know, but it kind of resembled a Porsche. And then I realized what does Fiat stand for? Fix it again tomorrow because those jokers were breaking down left and right and left and right and that's what's happening when you you know and it, it was a designer car unfortunately it just had so much and that's kind of what you're getting into when you get into these so-called designer dogs i mean let's not even go down the exotic rabbit hole because oh, that's god that's I mean, too long I mean, that's way too long of a conversation yeah, i mean we're this will this will be like you know we'll be here for the next <laughs> you know uh, seven days you know but you know be, being that when you start to manipulate or what I call Frankenstein, a dog, you know, you, you guys remember the movie Frankenstein, right? The guy was all strong up here, but he could barely walk. He was uncoordinated. <laughs> you know, he had some, 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 what, what, some, Hey, what did Ali say? He moves like a mummy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's, uh, jo uh, uh, George not, Foreman. George Foreman. That's right. Rumble in the jungle. He's a mummy. I'm here. I'm moving over here. Here it comes. You know, I mean, Lali, Ali was just a master <laughs> You know, at, at at that type of talk, and he was so psychological. My goodness, what a, the other thing? You know, you you brought up a good. You know, so we start from the head and we start making our way down. So you know, we already saw the face. We make sure that our pupils are dilated. You guys get a chance. Tap on the dog's eyes like this. There's 13 nerves in the crane in in the face, and you see something like that, and you don't get that type of reflex. You know, something can I say potentially be wrong because the moment you tap it as a matter of fact when dogs are waking up from anesthesia that's one of the reflexes we test for we do this and the dog starts to kind of do this and he's reflexing okay we know he's coming back the thing is you know this is for dogs under anesthesia not from where i'm going is we pull their tongue out you know and the, when the moment the tongue starts going back in the dog's getting his reflexes back you know waking up from anesthesia so you see a dog you tap around its eyes and it's got good reflexes the chances of the the, the pupils not being dilated you know we don't want to run into what's called juvenile cataracts. Of course, we want um, more instruments, you know, like ophthalmology type of instruments to see into the, you know, the actual retina and see if there's any little bumps or cysts or anything like that. That's a whole nother ball game. Like I said, I'm still focusing on the Frenchie. You got to look at its nostrils, make sure they're not too pinched. You know, you got to open up the mouth, make sure that the 
jaw is not undulated, which is called wry mouth. And then um, look at the formation of, of course, a puppy, you know, when the uh, when they're adults are going to have a total of 42 teeth as they're got as their incisors are erupting and such, you know, it might be a little bit hard to gauge where that lower mandible is, you know, but just, you know, take a quick gander at that. And, you, you know, you start work, working your way down as you start to palpate the dog down and you get down around its abdominal area. You know, a lot of dogs tend to have umbilical hernias. Now, I'm not really afraid of umbilical hernias. I'll tell you why. Um, sometimes the mother becomes very aggressive with the constant licking, licking, licking that she will actually sometimes cause the suture to rupture when it's very fresh and open that little incision, what's called that little line right down their abdominal area. It's called the linea alba. And basically it's right where the um, umbilical cord is. And if they very aggressive with that, you know, they can actually cause it. So, um, you know, depending on the severity of it, something to kind of be aware of it. It's uh, honestly, it's not a very hard fix. Um, like I said, once again, depending <laughs> on the severity, as you continue to palpate the dog going down its rear, what you just mentioned earlier, you know, take a good look at the testicles, you know, mm -hmm. have they both ascended? Sometimes they're too young, but you can feel the testicles up in there. You know, you can palpate and say, okay, there's two testicles there. If there's not one, you got to talk to the guy, you know, you got about six, seven months for them to both drop. Sometimes they do it earlier. Sometimes rare occasions, they do it up to eight months. It's mm. rare, you know, but you, that's something you need to be possible. Exactly. As you're saying, hey, you know what? I don't feel the testicles, you know, Hey, what kind of gear warranty? It's almost like a car, right? You know, or do you guarantee against crypto? Because that is something that is, has been documented as being congenital. Yeah. A lot of people swear where they'll leave. They won't fix them. One testicle has ascended. The other one has descended. And as the one that's ascended, you've got the spermatic cord that connects to it. And as the dog is having a frolla -la day and it's jumping and running stuff, that testicle starts to spin and it starts to wrap around the intestines and sometimes the small intestine, sometimes the colon. And as it's wrapping around, it's cutting circulation off. And that's one thing where it's, it's I laugh, you know, it goes, oh, you know, crypt orchid isn't dangerous. Uh, <laughs> have you ever seen one where we actually had to take, take part of the colon off because you know what? And there's dogs that have passed away from that, you know, the oh, dogs, snap. you know, depending See, exactly. This is, Ruben, this is, this is why we have to have these talks, man. This is why I was like, yo, let's get to it, man. We've got 2024 oh, is like the, the, the we got to double down. And this is information where you get to draw perspective on real life experiences that you've had that make things real and, and, and give people perspective on trying to do better. Now, again, the community will listen to what they want to hear, but we stand on principle and principle for me is I don't give a shit how you feel, what the fuck you think about me. I'm only here for the dog. It's about the dog and nothing else. Absolutely. I'm no one's friend. I, I say I know four or five people. Ruben, Chris, and now Tad Lock, you know, Jamarcus and Jamal, who was just in here a second ago. Hey, I Happy birthday, Jamarcus. Yeah, yeah Jamarcus, shit. he's not here. It's his Marcus. birthday. but Oh, man, he's at the mansion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but point is, is, you know, we, we've we connected, Ruben and I, mind you, this guy was in, not hiding, but you couldn't get to him. And then, he, you know, he found a voice that that spoke the way he he speaks, um, you know, integrally. And, and, you know, again, principles, hey, are we taking care of the dogs? Is the dog good? Past that, I'm not interested in anything, out, like how you feel and other stuff. Is the dog good? And if it's not good, we got to do something about it. And in our case, we'll put a dog down if it does not suffice and, and move on. Because that's the right thing to do instead of creating more problems. Greatest amount of good for the greatest amount of people. And in this particular Ooh. good case, greatest amount of good for the greatest amount of dogs. Um, you know, if, if you're going to hold on to something and it's going to continuously, you know, poison the, you know, just because you thought he's cute or you thought he had this, but he's continuously, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. And I'm not going to coin that because that's actually a, a philosopher by his last name was Kantian in uh, one of uh, my ethics class. I remember very well. And it stuck with me. You know, he also came up with the golden rule, you know, treat thy neighbor. Um <laughs> You know, so so when 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 he when he says, well, you know, that's that's actually debatable because if unless he was before Jesus or the Bible, exactly, because the because Bible it, says it's in it the, says it, love yourself or love your love your neighbor like you love yourself, and this do away with the Ten Commandments. There so, you see, and, and, and that's right. <laughs> it's, it's all open for interpretation. Yeah, man. And, 
<laughs> the Bible's even open up for interpretation because you could Period. read a past bunch of parables. That's all it is. You can't take them exactly. things. The bank. I, I love it. When I'm in that frame of mind, I love it. It's like, oh, this could mean this, but it could mean that. But it really depends on what type of emotion. Hey, you know what? It's like this. Who It, it means whatever day somebody wants me when it serves them. <laughs> and exactly. And as human beings, I'm sorry to say this, but we're, I mean, we're, I mean, I say we, cause I'm, you know, I'm in that same species. We're opportunistic. Man. We're opportunistic. <laughs> hey, um, listen, you know, the opportunity when Ruben opened his mouth and started talking about shit I never heard before. I said, well, I see this opportunity, buddy. We're going to execute and close this deal. <laughs> I need yeah. this guy's brain. It's like this. Hey, I don't know. Did you ever see the gardens of the galaxy? The third one? Yes, 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 yes. And, yes, and, yes. and what did he want? He said all those tests and it would, you know, I couldn't replicate you. He was mad because of not what the raccoon was, but who the raccoon became and exactly. solving those problems. So I tell people, look, this, this motherfucker here, Ruben, he's got a brain that I don't think most people understand. And if you don't know how to connect to it, I mean, for one, it'll go over your head, but even more importantly, he's rooted in care. He definitely, you know, gives a shit about the animals and people he, he deals with. And, you know, that's why we're still here today, because I go, man, there's only a few times in life that you meet someone just like you. And the irony is we're born we're born on the same fucking day. That's right. That's right. Hey, you know, birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> and, you know, Trevor, as as we descend and, you know, we feel, you know, testicles are there. OK, you know, let's just say hypothetically everything's boom. OK, this dog's checking out. Bam, 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 bam. Now, something that we can check. And it's once again, it's not that difficult. Um, come here, boy. Come here, come here, come here, buddy. Come on, I'll give you some chicken. Come here. <laughs> is um the knees, you know, right yeah. here. And you know, the teleluxation you put, people's exactly. thing. Exactly. You put a dog, and unfortunately, I mean, I wish there was somebody that could hold a camera. And you know, we, we do something what's called the drawer sign. So basically, you would hold the top femur and this particular joint right here, and you just move it back and forth. And if that's why it's called a drawer, because it opens and like a drawer, like you're closing a drawer and opening a drawer. You do that. And the moment you feel those patellas luxating, you need to be very, very careful. Now, granted, you know, um, we've got these growth plates, you know, that's, they're also known as epiphyseal plates, which is basically, um, when kids are going through their growing pains, you know, dogs also go through that. Those plates will close up when they're about two years of age. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'll see a little bit of more, you know, areas that are a little bit more flaccid, but harder to diagnose. <laughs> Only way to diagnose, for example, you know, hips is, um, is underneath x-rays. But since there's still calcification and the acetabulum of the femurs are still falling into those, into those hips, we can't see that until they're four, you know, so that's why some people will do preliminaries, which is at six months and then do the ones that, because OFA will only accept the ones that have been done at two years of age. So when you hear someone that, you know, did their, you know, six months, well, those are prelims. Those aren't the actual, you know, which is handy dandy, you know, because you kind of get an idea of what's to come, but you know, like they say, shit happens, right? Ah, you can't a lot of shit <laughs> happens. She caca. <laughs> Exactly, you know, but uh, you know, so, so then that's something like I'm just giving you guys things that you guys can look at and um, that you, you can physically put and let hands me, on. Let me interject here to people just because if you're listening to this or you're watching this, you want to comment below on this kind of stuff because you know, I don't do things for fun. And mind you, I'm having a lot of fun. The point in building a community of people where we all get to be successful is we could go do more funds because we have more funds. So when you're <laughs> when you're when you're when you're hearing or watching Ruben break these things down in detail, and it's forcing you to ask yourself a few more questions. Hey, should I breed? Should I actually get a fucking dog? You know how many messages I get where people be like, "Yo, my man, I just want to thank you because all the stuff you shared." I was like, "Oh wow, I don't think I should be breeding." I, I ain't even ready for that shit. And you know how many people bred once and never bred again because they had no clue what they were getting involved in. Someone made you think it was easy. It was, you could do this and get this. You go, who told you that? <laughs> who told you that? People hate going to buy a jug of milk or cereal or back to school supplies. You mean to tell me they're going to spend thousands and thousands of dollars, take care, feed a dog, clean up his poop every day, and then go get rich afterwards and, and barely, in some cases, take care of their kids? Stop it. Stop what do they people. call that in the investment world? The uh, dumb money, you know? Oh my god, just dumb, <laughs> dumb. But hey, hey, ignorance is bliss, and you it know, is. niggas love this. So, at any hoop, man, 
I think for one, Ruben, you've given us some things to consider and definitely think about. And this lends an opportunity because I want to like, okay, you, you know, you're killing it right now, man. I don't want to, I'm, I'm like this. Once I see the flow, you go, you know, I am, I'm, I start scaling in my mind. You go, Oh, I know what to do now. Well, you know, and it's, <laughs> And that's it, right? You get into this vibe, but I, I'm still not. I, I, and I think, you know, like I said, we, I mean, if we really want to detail it down to the, God, I don't even want to get started, Trevor, because <laughs> we're we're going to go, like I said, we're going to go on a tangent. But, but and, let's, I mean, but then let's, let's try to give them three things. I think two yeah. things, one thing, everything you said is super important. Can you go and touch the dog, see the dog, you know, boom, boom, boom. Health testing, I don't think it's completely there in totality yet. And mind you, most people ain't testing when they fucking some chick. So you're like, hey, I wonder if I could should reproduce with her. That's not the case. So we like to get this this grandeur idea of these people being perfect and giving you this perfect product. That's not the truth. But if you can go see the dog, oh, you're up one. If you can grab that that what do you say stethoscope? I just think it's how yeah, you say it. stethoscope. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And learn about how to hear the heart. That's a thing. If you can Emma. then assess even needs depending on what breed. I know people who've spent twenty thousand dollars on dogs to spend twenty thousand dollars on knees. So oh, you, because if you tear one CCL, and this is the challenge that even I have with the hip testing, you go, oh, well, what was the hip test like? I go, my man, the breeds plagued with CCL disease. I can tell you, we got perfect hips. That don't mean your dog won't tear that fucking C, you know, CCL. So now you're still gonna spend five thousand dollars. I've done it. Zara tore her knee. Collateral. Just. Ligament. Yes, she tore her knee and that and she's got decent hips. She's got tight. All the girls come out good for the most part. All the boys have problems if we use various boy. But point is, is where, you know, where you're looking left. Oh, here comes some other bullshit. There goes some, mm. right, some, some, some other shit. So the basic things, though, are, hey, that heart gets expensive, people. And there are dogs who have grade four mur murmurs who have to be on medication for the rest of the dog's life. The now you've added. Life. Uh, you've added a new bill. And then if the dog does get sick at grade four, you can, the doctor will recommend it's got to go down because if they put it to sleep to do anesthesia or they would do anesthesia, it's a high probability. You've already got a 50, 50 chance of the dog and any of us not waking up if we go under certain amounts of anesthesia. When you got a bad heart, it's like it jumps to like 70, 80 percent, if not 90. And they'd be like, hey, you just want to put this dog down. There's nothing we could do for you. <laughs> and we got to move on. So I think. Definitely what he's saying, depending on breed, physically seeing the dog, seeing the dogs move around, the parents move around, and definitely that heart. Those things get real expensive. And knees. So we went head, mm. we went pet, we went visibly touch. We saw the heart, and then we looked at the knees, depending on what breed. You might fare okay. Because we haven't even we you even might scratched allergies, but it's just a big maybe. You know, oh good lord. And in, 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 you know, in, in um, you know, DNA, you know, health testing. <laughs> but you know, okay, so, so if we were to number these out, you know, obviously we want to put hands on the dog, you know. I mean, actually, you know, we want we want to, you know, ask for you know images and stuff so we don't waste the person's time or, or our times, you know, make sure it's the dog that we want. Look, study, study our breed confirmation to see that the dog even resembles the dog that we think that we're getting. Okay. That's number one. Number two, like I said, put your hands on the dog, you know, feel them up and down, and, and you know, you, you're 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 getting closer. But I think number three, and obviously it doesn't have to be in this order. I think number three, and I probably the most important in my in my book yeah the most important is is you gotta like the person you're potentially doing deal of uh, business with you guys have to have have to have some sort of working relationship. because i'll tell you what if this person i don't care if they have the potential westminster champion if their attitude is garbage and their customer support is is, is crap i'm sorry you're not going to see one red penny out of my pocket i'm out i'm out and i'll go to the second tier and work with those dogs to get to that level because you know what this guy is like you know what ruben you know if this happens i got you don't worry this is gonna you know and if we can have a work even if it's not a contract per se to say this you know there's very few people like this that still have a word but if this person has a good and has highly referenced and i and it's just that energy if i'm on that same wavelength that same energy and it's i'm vibing you know he's capped Captured me. I feel very comfortable. I like you. And you know, I, I, I know how you feel about this one, Trevor, but there's a good chance that I'll probably be in touch with this person for the rest. Now I have sold dogs. As a matter of fact, I sold a dog that went to <laughs> to uh he, he's living his life on a yacht and basically the dog is the guy's like you know f you thank you for my dog that's all i needed that's all i want i'm out 
dogs living a great life. I haven't gotten one single picture. I heard through another friend that the dog's doing great. I guess he arrives yeah. at the San Pedro port like every, every other week, you know, just to check in. I'm thinking like, God damn, what a life is dogs, you know, and they got them clipped, you know, they got them neutered and stuff. And I'm thinking like, geez, if I could sell all dogs, but you know, not all dogs go to heaven. Well, actually they do. <laughs> <laughs> it's us that not all humans go to heaven. So hey. you know, I think that's, that's the last point you, you have to vibe with the person, you know, the person, you know, you have to. It goes back if, to Ruben. You saying before you buy a dog, find a mentor. And then if you do buy oh. a dog, I think, I think this the question my rebuttal to people in my direct message at times is um hey did you uh i got a dog that's biting doing such i said did you talk to the breeder they like well you know basically why would i do that uh because if he doesn't know what that's why i'll be doing the video what the epigenetics are then you don't yeah. know that you were getting a hot ass fucking dog and there's your problem now how do you want me to solve this because i've said out loud I am not a behavioralist can i read behavior because of my peer obsession with dogs and know when to back the fuck up Absolutely. But I would never buy. I go and see, you know, the dogs for the most part where I get on FaceTime and I'll have the, you know, people that I bought dogs for do this and that. And now we're in a more controlled environment where we can really invest in attitude, which, again, goes back to Ruben's original point. Not only um, from a from a like selling standpoint, do we want to make sure that we're working with the right people? But, you know, are we are we getting the dog that we can really manage? And so there are times we you know we do a lot of puppy development. And there, when a woman says, "Hey, you know, I've got a family," I say, "Okay, guys, this particular boy, we're not going to get him curious. He'll be curious naturally, but there's a way to manage it without like creating the curiosity my dogs have that'll be running up trees and jumping in water and chasing shit. And she don't want to, She don't. She don't want to deal with that. And so when we take this group of dogs out today and deal with them on the stuff, we are not going to motivate him. The one thing we will teach him is to go up and downstairs. Past that, nothing. So when he walks in the house, he's confident. Chest is out, going up and down the stairs. I solved half of her problem because who want to carry a puppy up and down the stairs? And your mind, you do the first like week, and then you're like, fuck this. This motherfucker better come up these stairs, goddammit. <laughs> And learn how to use the bathroom. So outside of that, you know, knowing that your breeder is breeding with the intent to better the dogs. And then even more importantly, like Ruben said, get on that customer hotline and, and say, hey, my man, I'm having this issue. And I've had three hour conversations with people who bought Fit Bullies and told them, look, you want to get this under control quick. Because they can call and ask me anything. I could tell you in detail about the parents, what you might face. I added two bad components, you know, Azar and Baloo breeding. D defense with confidence, you get reaction. So, you know, even myself, I, they chewed on my hand because they were fearful and reactive due to their dad. Wasn't a great breeding. I'd say two of the dogs at this moment in time might already be put down. And for sure, one should have been put down. Um, and, and I was happy to do so. But these people are like, oh, I can manage it. And you say, if you think so, but if he ever comes back to me, I'm not going to second guess. He's not going anywhere else. He's going down. Okay. Just so we're clear. <laughs> and then we have to move on. And I, and I said this earlier, as we were initiating this conversation is that you're the exception to the rule. I don't, I mean, and I don't say this to blow any smoke up your rear end. I say it, I say it, you know, I think you are, you're, you're, you might be, you might be one of the most transparent breeders I have yet to meet. Cause I'll tell you what, uh, the dogs that do show, uh, you know, human aggression and I've got, I mean, I'm reading, um, uh, Richard Garcia Schoolboy. you know, I'm reading his book right now where, you know, and we're going to, you know, we're going to fall back to the American pit bull terrier, the actual yeah. game dog where it was a big no, no, a big no, no for them to turn on their, on their humans, because, you know, sometimes you get that redirected aggression, you're in the pit, this and that, but you know, a dog's fired up and I don't care how turned up the dog is. There is no, now there's some lines, you know, there's some Eli lines, there's some <laughs> red bull lines. There's some, um, not the Colby's. Oh my goodness. I can't remember. This is a uh, fat bills, you know, that were, but as a breeder, they wouldn't tell you this. I would, I would, I look, I think to ensure that we last long and we play the long game and everything that we do from an investment standpoint to a life, I, you know, my question, even to the team and, and even yourself, Ruben, Ruben's going to live a healthy life. And if it's God's will and, and his will, meaning Ruben's to be clear, he will live, you know, for another 20 years. He's got a daughter to live for, a wife to live for, some son to live for, and some things he probably still wants to achieve. In this case, if we play the long game from an investment standpoint, then I can't 
negate that, you know, I've created some of the problems and the biggest lesson I learned, one of the biggest lessons was, was accountability. And I learned that at a very young age. So he said, how did you achieve success? I fucking show you guys when my, when our dog swallowed a toy and he's got necrosis, people would have hit that. I fucking mm -hmm. show you when the dogs yeah. bit my hand and went live and, that, and bleeding. Right yeah. And, 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 and bleeding and go in the cages on a live right after it happens and show you, I didn't do anything to them because they were something off with them, to say the least. One's made it past that day. One has it. Bam Bam's no longer with us. We had to reuse ego because ego has the best poise in every situation I put him in. So I have to double down on the dog. That's a good dog because the question is, you go to Facebook. Hey, what's happening or Twitter? What's happening in Facebook? They got a question. Everybody's got a question. The question a great businessman asks himself is, you know, what's the number one question we want to solve for when breeding? When breeding, can we make a good dog? I don't give a shit about that head size and 100 pounds and over whatever. I'm like, a good dog is a dog that can live as long as possible in someone's possession where they feel comfortable, confident, and, and competent. Comfortable, competent, and competent enough to take care of the dog. And that's why the education is so important. And the transparency, because it doesn't go right. Social media is a fake fucking place. And, and I'm like... Yeah. I've got nothing to hide, people. I'm not going to be here that long. So even when people overthink about oversharing, I go, my man, how many years you been alive? Motherfucker be like, oh, you know, I've been alive for 30. I said, who even, who remembers one thing that you ever did outside of your mom and your daddy to give a shit about you? And the next 30 years, what do you think you're going to do that people really don't care about? You're as good as your last post. And that was last Monday. 21 posts later, if you post every three times a day for seven days straight, nobody remembers it because nobody goes to someone's page and scrolls. So there's nothing to hide because there's nothing to glorify and not even us. We're not doing anything special. We're fucking breeding dogs. That's not special. <laughs> if we can enrich and improve their quality of lives long-term because people are going to make poor choices, that might make us special. Absolutely, man. And, and you know, the, 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 I think the easiest way to find out if you've got a good product on your hands is don't ask your friends, <laughs> don't ask your family, ask a complete stranger. Because they're not emotionally invested in you. And, I, you know, even with photography, which I, you know, I'm a huge, you know, I'm a, I have a lot of affinity for photography in no district. I love my family. I love my friends. And, you know, they say, wow, that, that's amazing. That's amazing. But when I get a compliment from an absolute stranger and I said, like, whoa, that, it, that means something. That yeah. means something. So yeah. same with your dogs, same with your dogs, you know, you know, friends and family. Yeah. You know, but when you hear it, like from, in your case, you know, from absolute strangers, you got a live one. We got, we got a live one with Ruben. Listen, man, I, I've taken up at least a good 45 minutes and you know, oh. me and you can go for, for oh. about two days straight. Like Ruben and I, everyone around awesome. me knows, look, if Ruben calls, look guys, just go do some work. <laughs> We're about to get into the good conversation here. There's plenty of work to do. Believe me. Um, but point is, is I, I, I've actually just with this thing we've done today, I was like, damn, I've missed this energy because like Tadlock, even I don't have respectfully to people around me. You don't have a lot of people that can like go there with you. Um, you know, not even metaphorically speaking. And what I love about you and, and, you know, my other, you know, mentor, Chris is these two men know me well enough. And I go, I remember Chris spoke to a guy on my behalf. And the guy says, hey, man, I, I want to do something with that fit bully. He goes, he laughs. He goes, my man, he might tell you, nigga, get out of my face. And Chris like, I don't even use, I don't even cuss, but I, he said it. He was like, he called, he's like, yo, you got to ask him. He said, because um, that motherfucker don't care. He fucks with who he fucks with. And I'm thinking, have I been around long enough for Chris to know me like that? What I have been is the person I've always been. And that's clear. And, and uh, so uh, I, I, I stand on principle and I want, the people around me to be great it's very difficult to get within close proximity because i like i like my space and my quiet and my peace and i love work i love working towards something men need something to do before he gave you a woman if we, we go biblically he gave you a task a job a purpose and so i can't be one of those that don't do enough or, or don't do something and it just so happens i'm around the right people to keep doing more and um enriching everyone's lives and i think this might be the place to like really push. So Ruben's a guy who I'll always wake up and want to be a little bit better because of. And it's these conversations that remind me how much better we collectively can make the world my friend. Well, I mean, uh, you know, just to shout out uh, our good uh, Stan Smith. Uh, I, lo I love what he's, you know, the his logo, you know, Iron 
sharp canine yep. and there's a passage i don't know what what you know passage it's in the bible and it's uh you know iron sharpens iron right nice. and and i think uh even yourself whoever sees this video or such is um so, you know you are the five people you hang around with the most that's who you are. I can't recall the mathematical equation. There's an actual formula, which is it. So it's very valid. And I was thinking, I said, God, isn't that the absolute truth? You know, yeah. so, um, you know, there's a saying, you know, just tell me who you hang out with. I'll tell you who you are. Yeah. So just, just be really, really, really. Show careful. me your friends and I'll show you your future people. It's, it's yeah. that simple. It's like, it's a very real saying. And, and you know, um, the beauty about it is, is a guy called me once and, and we'll leave it at this after this one. We'll definitely come back with more information. But uh, he said, Trev, you know, he's having a problem with a friend. What a friend of his. And I said, is he someone you admire? He says, oh, man, I never thought about that. I said, if you died today and you had to come back as him, would that be someone you'd want to be like in any form or fashion? <laughs> he's like, hell no. I said, then why are you friends with him? And that 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 fucked him up. It made him think a little bit because you're not calling to complain to me. You're calling because you can't make a choice. And it's that's that, the, that's that time for that motherfucker to go, bro. I said I'm Edward hey, Scissorhands when it comes to cutting folks. So, <laughs> what's the definition of a friend, right? No, the way I've I've gone through life is like it's someone you know and you still like, you exactly. know. That's it. That's all. And, and you know, like and they, they, you know, it can go to so many extremes. But in this particular case, you know, we, we've, like you said, we've got a lot of ground to cover. <laughs> a lot, and, and this lays yeah. the groundwork, man. But look, I got to ask you this because it is your first podcast with us. Uh, right. What keeps you motivated? Because you know, the whole thing is unfucking motivated. But what keeps you motivated, Ruben? Uh, there are no signed contracts with passion. Ooh. I could, I could wake up tomorrow, and be like i'm done but it's not i i wish i i wish there was a a moral con well no i shouldn't say moral con but you know that there was an actual gauge inside of me and say you know what you're gonna do this until you're 50 and then you're gonna go do something else you know and um you know i haven't hit that day now tell them i mean i'm I, i'm not gonna lie to you there's been days that i've been tested extremely <laughs> I, mean, I don't really want to touch on those days because it kind of brings me down there's some gloomy yeah. days that might bring a tear to my eye that um you know things were just out of my control and that's just life you know yeah. but i i try to uh you know there, there's always um you know the, the good luck and the bad luck and i mean i'm just going to touch on the story super super quick about that guy that lost his yak um and then the guy, you know, they say, was that good luck or bad luck? And so what's bad luck? Yeah, but guess what? When the yak came back, he came back with three other yaks, wild ones. Was that good luck or bad luck? Oh, shit, I guess it's good luck. And then they, <laughs> and when he was grooming the yak. He uh, fell over, broke his foot. Was that good luck or bad luck? It was bad luck. Guess what? Two weeks later, the military came recruiting all kids between 18 to 50. Since he had a broken foot, they couldn't recruit him. Was it good luck or bad luck? Like, oh, shit. It's good. <laughs> so that perspective. Right. It's exactly like the, the, the same thing with the with the cup half filled. Um, it's it's it, it's life. It's a balancing act. And, you know, and you can't take yourself too seriously, you know, because at the end of the day, no one gets out of this thing alive. Man, that's my favorite <laughs> saying. You know, don't take life too serious, people. Nobody makes it out alive. Nobody this is the un this is the unmotivated podcast. Ruben, a segment with my guy Ruben is on here. People follow, like, share, comment below. We can't thank you enough for being a part of this journey. My goal is to at least hit 500 episodes and over 300 just this year. If people are going to compete with me, they're competing with a dog. And, 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 you know, because, because of my community, I think we can reach limitless heights. So Ruben and I will try our best to get on here twice a week and drop episodes and i mean that's the bare minimum it's like yo can we you think about it like this you watch an episode of something or you sit down if you can sit down in 45 minutes post share and then scale your brand you go let's just let's just talk dog our our, our life that's the easiest thing we'll do we talk for three hours on the phone normally so oh, you go God. we that's... might as well record this stuff educate enhance improve status quo and and see how far we can we can grow as well while just talking about everything we've done you know and been through and, and we're going to go through and the things we're learning so ruben i can't thank you enough for your time and it's one of the most valuable assets in this world um no matter who you are a minute to me a minute to the president a minute to the dog is the same minute and we don't got a lot of them we die daily people keep taking care of yourself hey and get this stay motivated Absolutely. Or, or inspired. One of the there two. There you go, my 